And welcome back to the WHHI Daily News. With us now is Dr. Nadine Burke Harris, pediatrician and former Surgeon General in the state of California. She's with the ACE Resource Network, and we're talking today about kids and stress. So, Dr. Burke Harris, it's nice to have you with us. What is the ACE Network? Uh, the ACE Network is a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to raising awareness about the impact of ACEs and toxic stress and also advancing solutions, making sure that we know what to do and can get our kids the care that they need. So well, let's talk about when you talk about kids, are we talking about all ages of kids and how does stress impact them in their lives? Yeah, so when we talk about adverse childhood experiences, those refer to stressful or uh, potentially traumatic experiences uh, experienced before the age of 18. So we are talking about kids of all ages. And what the research shows is that when kids experience things like abuse or neglect, or growing up in a household with a parent who is struggling with their mental health or struggling with substance dependence or where there's uh, parental separation or divorce. And these are all things that we saw increase during the COVID pandemic. That these things can actually activate the long-term uh, long -term activation of our body's stress response. So releasing stress hormones. And that can lead to increased risk of things like uh, health problems like mm -hmm. asthma or diabetes or depression and in the long run without intervention they can increase the risk for things like heart disease and cancer and so that's why we're really trying to uh, raise awareness and help people understand how we can prevent those long-term challenges. So Dr. Burke Harris what would be some of the symptoms how do we know if uh, our child grandchild is experiencing stress and anxiety yeah. So as a pediatrician, this is something that I dealt with every day in my clinical practice. Some kids will have changes like disturbance in sleep, right? The trouble mm -hmm. sleeping or changes in their appetite. Some will have trouble with their self-regulation. But for some kids, we won't see any behavioral changes at all. Some kids will have, for example, more difficulty managing their asthma because the stress is impacting their immune system and inflammation. Uh, other kids will have more trouble with their learning. So there's lots of different ways that it can show up for kids. But one of the things that we know is that safe, stable, and nurturing relationships and environments are the antidote to toxic stress. Excellent. So other maybe tips that you can offer us and how we can protect our kids from toxic stress? Well, what's really important to understand, Robin, is that, for example, in South Carolina alone, the cost of adverse childhood experiences in direct health care costs and lost productivity is $177 billion per year, according to a new study from the CDC. And what that means is that these issues impact us at the family level, but they also impact our entire society. Mm -hmm. And so our solutions have to be not only at the individual level, but also systemic, right? Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that we are doing the early detection and early intervention that the science shows makes the biggest difference for kids, right? And make sure that families have access to the interventions that can improve children's health. But don't parents have the, the direct uh, influence on really managing that, helping that child to manage stress? Isn't really it all about the parents? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Parents make such a big difference. And when, we, when it comes to parents providing those safe, stable, and nurturing relationships and environments, what we know is that two-thirds of us have experienced our own adverse childhood experiences, right? And one in six have experienced four or more. So one of the biggest challenges for us as parents and caregivers is making sure that we have done the healing work on our own adversity because that impacts the way that we're able to show up for our kids, right? So we know that there is this intergenerational cycle 
of uh, stress and trauma that can happen. And breaking that intergenerational cycle uh, depends on making sure that parents have access to the resources that they need. So things like mental health, things like uh, you know safe places to do regular exercise, but also social supports. Right, very good. Just very quickly, in like 10 seconds, where can we go for more information, Dr. Burke Harris? Well, I wrote a book about it. It's called The Deepest Well, Healing the Long-Term Effects of Childhood Adversity. And uh, the website numberstory.org is also a great resource for parents and caregivers. Thank you so much for your time. This is very interesting. We appreciate, appreciate your work. Thank you, ma'am. It's and, my pleasure. And that's a wrap for this edition of the WHHI Daily News. I'm Robin Zimmerman. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to stay safe and healthy, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.